Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna take a look at this thing right here. And this is the Insper NF. 5180M6. Now that one in the 5180, that actually means that it is a one use server, so that makes sense. And then the M6 means that it's the sixth generation. So if that model number sounds vaguely familiar, the reason for that is that we actually took a look at the Inspur NF 5280M6, which is a 2U version of this system, previously on STH. We'll link that review in this description. So today, we're gonna to take a look at this one use server. We're gonna look at the outside and then we're gonna get inside and kind of go through it and explain all the different features that there are. And one of the really cool things is that we actually have data now in terms of what's the difference between the 2U and 1U versions of this server. And so we're gonna share that a little bit later in our performance and power section. And starting with the server, let's kind of get to the front of the server because I think that's probably one of the more interesting parts of this. So when you look at the server, what you're gonna see is that we have a total of 12 two and a half inch drive trays. Now, of course, these things are all toolless and hot swappable as you would expect. And in this particular system, the backplane is set up so that way you can have either SATA or you can have SAS or NVMe. So depending on what you have in terms of internal controllers, you can kind of pick what type of configuration you want for your front storage. And while that is the configuration that we have, what I should mention just real quick is let's take a look at what some of the options are. Now, of course, we only get one server because it's not really um, effective to go and sense a whole bunch of servers, but there are different configurations here that I think are super cool. And I just wanna go through those real quick. So this is the front configuration guide for the server. And there are a ton of different options. So while we have the 12 to a half inch bay in front of us, the other options are actually really cool as well. You could get just 10, two and a half inch SATA SAS NVMe drive bays, and that's one option, but you could also get an eight two and a half inch plus two M.2 and two E1S option, which is uh, kind of really cool because that kind of lets you mix some of the different types of storage. And then if you want to have three and a half inch drives in there, well, that would be the top left where you could have four three and a half inch drive bays, plus you could have four two and a half inch, but slim drives. So that's always an option. One of the coolest though, is the fact that you can also do four three and a half inch drive bays, plus you can have have the two M.2 and two E1S as well. And so there are a lot of different configuration options. And the cool thing about having all of that different types of storage in there is that you can still have things like large disks. If you're doing like something like storing video or you know you have big data sets, you can put those on inexpensive storage, but you can also have boot drives. You can have things like your cache drives and all that kind of stuff all up front. But let's get to the one that I think I'm just most excited about. And probably the coolest one by far is that there's an E1S, but a 32 SSD drive bay. I mean, you can put a absolute, this is a one use server and you can put 32 drives in it. And that is really the magic of E1S. There also has to be enough cooling to be able to cool those. So it's really cool that Inspur can actually do that. And if you wanna see what E1S is and EDSFF, we have a video that we will also link in the description on that. And since we just talked about cooling, let's just kind of keep working our way back in the server. So behind the actual drive bays, we have the back plane, which is just kind of normal. And of course, those are set up to be able to accept SATA, SAS or NVMe all in the same back plane. So you can kind of mix and match what you want in a server and you can configure it however you need. But behind that, we actually have have the fans. And again, what we see is that we have the metal honeycomb guides that are actually airflow guides that guide air and direct air through the fan modules. Now we have eight dual fan modules and they kind of look a little bit like this. And these dual fan modules, we have eight of them. So it means we have a total of 16 fans in the system. And that's really there to be able to provide enough cooling for NVMe SSDs in front, the high-end Intel Xeon scalable third generation processors, and also Optane DC persistent memory in the middle. And then when you get to the back having things like NICs and accelerators. One nice thing about these fan modules is the fact that they actually do have the ability to be hot swappable. Some lower end one use servers don't have this feature. And really it's something that in the two U form factor is actually not that hard to do, but in one U, it is pretty hard to do hot swappable fans. And so as a result, not every one U server has hot swappable one U fans. And that is kind of a differentiator of this solution versus some lower end solutions. And we talked about the third generation Intel Xeon scalable processors and just kind of a couple notes on those. So first off, this is Ice Lake in terms of our third generation Intel Xeon scalable. There is Cooper Lake as well, but this is the Ice Lake generation, which is our 10 nanometer generation. We get a bunch of new features such as we get a bunch of accelerators and we've taken a look a couple times at accelerators and we have pieces on that, which we will link in the description as well. 
And those accelerators include things like the cryptographic accelerators. There's also things for VNNI, like for AI inferencing. And then finally, you know, there are things like AVX 512, which kind of works a lot kind of in the high performance computing space. So there's a bunch of accelerators in these, plus the fact that we go up to 40 cores in this generation, we have two processors, and then we get a total of eight channel memory per processor. So 16 channel memory in the entire system. And what that basically means is the fact that we can go up to now DDR4 32 200 in this generation and we can have up to 12 terabytes of combined DC persistent memory and also main just DRAM. And so what that practically means is that when you look side to side across the processor, you can see that basically the entire width of the chassis is either DDR4 memory slots or it's processors and heat sinks. So I mean, this is an absolutely packed system. We'll talk a little bit more about performance when we get to that section later. Now, just behind the CPUs, something that you're gonna notice is that in this system, we actually have two M.2 slots, and those are specifically filled in here with 480 gigabyte boot SSDs. So there are there is internal boot SSD media that you can use, so you don't have to use your valuable, you know, front bays or front hot swap bays for things like boot drive. So that is a feature in this system. And what you're gonna see if you looked at this system compared to the NF5280M6 is that the 5280M6 actually had a storage mezzanine card slot that was basically sitting in this spot. It's the same motherboard, but in that server, we actually had that populated, whereas in this one, we have the dual M.2 slots populated. Of course, in a one use server, you have different storage needs, so I guess that makes sense. Moving behind that though, we actually get all of the PCIe expansion, and that can include a whole bunch of different options. I mean, for example, one of the things that we have is we have an OCP NIC 3.0 slot, and we'll show you both the internal view of that as well as the external view. But in here, we actually have 25 gigabit ethernet. So we have a dual port 25 gig ethernet NIC, and that is the main networking on the system. Beyond that though, we also have PCIe risers. And specifically, this particular system has three risers. Two of them are low profile. One is a full height riser. And in one of the low profile risers, we actually have the NVIDIA T4 because this system can support accelerators. And just real quick, while we do have the T4 in there for photos, we did also test a Xilinx FPGA in that slot as well. I don't know if that's going to be released by the time that we actually uh, put this video out. So we're just going to say that we did try another accelerator in there and it did definitely work, but we are probably going to wait for that for another piece until we can actually disclose that. Another quick note on the risers is the fact that they come out and they are completely toolless in design. So they're super easy just to go pull out whenever you need to. It's definitely not like previous generation one you servers where you had to like sit there and you know do little tiny screws that sometimes would get lost and things like that i mean these things are super easy just to go pop out in terms of serviceability i think that that's actually a really good feature okay now looking at the rear of the server let's just kind of go through this real quick first off we're going to see on the left hand side that we do have the ocp nick 3.0 slot and so that is just kind of the number one way that we're going to start seeing network LOMs in this generation. I mean, just everybody is using the OCP NIC 3.0 form factor. It's definitely taking the industry by storm. And so it's great that we actually see that on this Inspur server. Above that, you're going to see that we have our full height slot. I will quickly note the fact that Inspur, kind of like the front, where there are a whole bunch of different configuration options, there are different configuration options for risers and such on the rear of the system. So we're just going to go through what we have here. Now in the center, what you're actually gonna see is the fact that we have a low profile slot, so that's our center riser. And then below that, you're gonna see that we actually have two little slots or two a little cutout that's not populated. And that looks like it's there for two network ports. If you go look at the motherboard again, you're gonna see that there is a spot for a network controller that is just not populated in this particular system. And so that is something that we just don't have in our configuration, but there are configuration options. And that's why you see both a little cutout there as well as the pads to actually go and have the NIC populated. It's just our system does not have that. And since that's depopulated, you may be wondering what that giant silver heatsink is on the motherboard there. What that really is, is that's the Lewisburg Refresh PCH. And that gives us functionality such as it gives us some of our SATA. It also gives us things like our PCIe that we would use for something like our baseboard management controller, which we're going to talk about next. This system has an A-Speed AST2500 baseboard management controller, and we get management. We have an entire video, I think, on the Inspur web management that you, know, you can go find. But at the same time, you know, this is just kind of your, we both have Redfish for out-of-band management, as well as we have things like a web GUI. And so we have a really nice setup there. We have the HTML5, IKVM, and all that. Next to our out-of-band management port on the rear, we also have two USB ports as well as our VGA port. That's, those are really meant for if you're in the data center and you have to service the system, that's how you would do it. Above that, we have the NVIDIA 
T4, which is our AI accelerator for AI inference. And we will get a little bit more into that when we get to our performance section in a little bit. But first, let's get to power. And specifically, we have 1.3 kilowatt power supplies. These power supplies are redundant, so we have two of them, and either one of them can actually power the entire system. That is why they are 1.3 kilowatts each. Now, in modern day servers, there is a huge range in terms of how you can configure. I mean, if you have a low end versus a high end processor, if you have accelerators, no accelerators, you have things like Optane memory versus not, you have kind of lower end SSDs or hard drives versus if you have a bunch of SSDs or NVMe SSDs on the front. So power consumption can definitely range and Inspire has a number of different power supply options. Something that we just looked at using both this system and the 2U Brethren, what we've basically found was was that there is a appreciable amount that you actually save in terms of power consumption if you have both an efficient power supply, but also the right size power supply. So don't necessarily just go and order the largest power supply, but then put something like a low end Xeon Silver or Xeon Gold CPU. However, if you are using things like the Xeon Platinum lines or the CPUs that have very high TDPs and you have very dense configuration, you definitely want a larger PSU in this because this particular system, we could easily get over 900 Watts uh, when we were pushing it. And so you have to kind of just take that in mind and make sure that you're getting the right size power supply. We'll actually link to that in the description. The other thing that we found though, which was really interesting when we compared this versus the 2U version of the system is the fact that we could actually get about 1.1-ish percent lower power consumption on the 2U version. Now you may say, oh, well, if you get lower power consumption on the 2U version, why would I ever want the 1U version? And I think that that makes a lot of sense, right? Because on one hand, the 2U server, that which is the NF5280M6. That one actually has the ability to have different storage configurations. So you have just more faceplate area for different storage. You also have more room for things like PCIe risers. But on the flip side, the 1U server, of course, has more density. So if you have as much power as you need, but you're limited by the number of U that are in your rack and in your data center, well, then the 1U servers make a lot of sense because you can just fit more servers into a rack. And when you're talking about doubling the number of nodes, CPUs, memory, all that kind of stuff in a in the same rack footprint, frankly, there are a lot of folks that will say, hey, I'm willing to give up some expandability, although this system definitely has a lot, but I'm also willing to give up that, say, 1.1% delta in terms of 2U versus 1U power consumption, just because you know I really want that density. But it is there, and we did measure it using this system from Inspur as well as the 2U version. Now, of course, you're probably wondering, what does that mean in terms of performance? Does the one u server not cool the CPUs as well? And like, you know, what does that mean in terms of performance? And so we used a number of different processors and what we basically found was that the performance of this system was very, very close to the 2U system. And both of them actually, you know, performed just kind of really close to our, our benchmark anyway, uh, in terms of, you know, what we would expect to see from the different processors because, you know, Inspur is a giant vendor and of course they're gonna have good performance in their systems. And so one of the really cool things though was the fact that we could load up very high TDP CPUs in this and we didn't necessarily see any major, you know, like decrement in terms of performance. On some systems, what you'll see is if they're tuned for lower power processors. If you put higher end processors, they may say they support high end processors, but if you put those high end processors in, there's a huge delta in terms of a 2U versus a 1U system. But with these Inspur servers, we did not see that. And so that's really good. The other thing we wanted to test was also the NVIDIA T4. And we wanted to see, well, how does that NVIDIA T4 perform compared to the NVIDIA T4 that we've had in other systems? And frankly, we found that the performance was exactly, I mean, it was like within 0 0.1, 0 0.2% or so. So it's almost exactly the same between this one new system as some of the other kind of GPU compute servers that we've looked at. So if you are doing things like you wanna have video analytics uh, or you're doing some other kind of AI inferencing and you want to not just have the, you know, what's in the third generation Intel Xeon scalable uh, accelerators for DL boost and AI inferencing there. And you wanna go put it in NVIDIA T4 GPU in there and, you know, do inferencing like that. Or if you wanna put a different GPU, you can certainly go do that with accelerators in the system. And there is extra cooling capacity, even with higher end CPUs 
and we were able to still cool that. Now there are of course configuration options that we did not have, like we didn't have Optane, you know, the high end half terabyte uh, DC persistent memory modules in there or premium 200 modules in there. We didn't necessarily have a, you know, full like that 32 bay front system uh, for SSDs and stuff. So there are definitely options that you can do that we did not get to test, but just in this kind of kind of more mainstream configuration, we definitely saw there was enough cooling for that NVIDIA T4 GPU. So hey, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Inspur NF5180M6 server. This is definitely one that we've been using at STH and we've shown a couple of times on the STH main site and also here on YouTube. We've shown it in a number of different articles, especially when we've been comparing things like 2U servers versus 1U servers. Something that was great to see though, was the fact that if you have like 2U servers and 1U servers and you know, you're trying to decide between the two, when we actually looked at this, I mean, summary is basically that the CPU performance was the same, GPU performance, at least with that one T4 was the same. And then also the fact that you know we got only a fairly small i mean we're talking like you know a little over one percent in terms of a power delta between the two platforms even with high-end cpus so i actually think that you know you can make that decision based on basically two factors whether you want the 2u or 1u system if you need more expandability and you don't necessarily need that density in a rack i think the 2u one that we looked at previously is a better option however if you are looking for that just absolutely you know maximum density in your rack while still maintaining the kind of single node formats well then i definitely think Think that the Inspur NF5180 M6 is a good option. And hey, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Inspur NF5180 M6 server. We definitely have a whole bunch of different server reviews that we are going to be publishing throughout the next quarter or so. And so I hope that you stay tuned. And well, if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe, turn on the notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.